As you guys might know, our adult pair of African fat-tailed geckos, Gaia and Atlas, have produced some babies for us this year. All of the babies that are already out of the egg have been growing like weeds, and they're all doing really well except for one little baby. So today we're gonna talk about that little baby and talk about his prognosis and see if he's gonna make it. But right before we get into it, my name's Raph, this is Atlas, and this is Gaia once again. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to Red Ribbon Reptiles, and that's enough chit chat. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. My girl Gaia right here is a gorgeous little gecko, but as you guys can tell, she's not a very big one, especially compared to her man, Atlas. But apparently size has nothing to do with fecundity as she produced nine clutches of fertile eggs. That's 18 eggs in total. Now, so far, starting on Halloween, 12 of these little babies escaped their egg prisons and are now doing great. They're eating and growing well, except for the fifth one that hatched. Now this one, so it was doing fantastic, just like all of its other siblings, until one day it just stopped eating. Now, of course, fasting can be a completely normal thing for a bunch of different species of reptiles, maybe all of them. I don't know. I don't know every species of reptile, so I'm not gonna tell you that every species of reptile can do it. But, uh, and arguably it's very healthy for some adult specimens to fast for a while, you know? Especially in captivity, we have a tendency to overfeed these guys and obesity is a big killer of reptiles, so fasting's not a huge deal when you're talking about adults, okay? Roshi, our leopard gecko, actually the first reptile that we ever got, he's been fasting for a while now. And you know, we check his temperatures, our other leopard gecko, Kami, is eating just fine. But that being said, sometimes Kami goes off food too. So not only are they being fasted, but they're doing it on their own terms. Which keeps me sane because we know we're offering them food they're just choosing not to take it. So especially if it's up to them, it's totally okay with me. But this fasting can be pretty scary when you're talking about babies straight out of the egg because these guys are gonna be growing at a very fast rate. Maybe it's not a huge deal if they skip a meal here or there, we're feeding them every day because they're growing so fast. You know, they were technically eating off that yolk of that egg for about 60 days roughly straight. So we're gonna keep right up with that until they get a bit older. And then, you know, as adults, they can eat a couple times a week, but as babies, we're gonna keep feeding them to facilitate that growth and make sure they don't get stunted and they develop properly. And from day one with the first clutch that hatched, we were feeding a variety of feeders. Number one, it's kind of like a form, Mochi, you gotta, Mochi, you gotta go away. <laughs> Number one for enrichment, right? It gives them a chance to look at different insects every night and learn that these are all viable options for food. And number two, variety is key in pretty much any animal's diet. If they're eating a bunch of different things, it's more likely that they'll get a full nutritional profile. So we weren't too worried the first couple days that this little baby wasn't eating because maybe it just didn't like the feeders that were being offered on those particular days. We did start worrying when we made it through pretty much the whole cycle of all the feeders that we have and regularly feed our reptiles, and we started seeing some little hip bones showing. And with obesity being such a big deal in reptiles and that they're so, you know, able, I guess I would say, to become obese, they're so susceptible to it because their metabolisms are so slow. Again, it's a baby, so its metabolism's faster than its parents here. It was still pretty worrisome that the whatever extra he was building up during the time that he was eating every day was quickly going away. So for this reason, we thought we should assist feed him. And we did a couple times with moderate success. We were able to get like three insects down his, uh, his little hatch. But sadly, he didn't enjoy it at all. You could tell like he was visibly stressed out. And after we got one insect per feeding into his mouth, he just clamped that mouth shut and wouldn't open it. And you know, he's this big, I'm not gonna start cranking on his face to rip his mouth open. So we figured we'd cut our losses there for each feeding. So we had to come up with a backup plan. Critical Carnivore Care by Oxbow, a really cool product. It's a powder that you mix with a little bit of water and it's to feed 
all different sorts of carnivores that need a little bit of extra nutrition, right? It's a mixture of things that carnivorous animals eat. Things from Mochi. Mochi, go away. Mochi, say bye. Oh, say bye to the people, Mochi. Bye. <laughs> I don't know if Mochi noticed that I had living things in my hand. She'd probably try to kill him, so. So carnivore care, good for things like I think on the on the label it's listed for like ferrets, snakes, monitor lizards, birds of prey even. So we figured that this would be a good option seeing that yes they're insectivores but their body process but their bodies are good at processing animal proteins, which is what this product is. Plus it was in a mush form, so it would be seemingly easier for him to just get down. Uh, as opposed to something like a full insect that if he doesn't really want to actively do it, we're not able to give it to him, it, that would be very difficult. So we went with carnivore care. So we mixed some of this product up with some water and I picked up an irrigation syringe from my veterinarian and we thought we'd give it a try. And to be honest, it was, as Bora would say, very nice, great success. He started eating it right away. Uh, we opened his mouth and I shot it directly into his mouth at first. But then I think he just really liked it a, a whole bunch. He just started, I was squirting it like on his mouth and he was licking it up like, like he'd never eaten anything before. Where are you going? And after two sessions of feeding him this carnivore care, which was great to see him eat it, we got some even better news. This whole time we we're still offering insects in case, you know, whenever he decided that he wanted to eat insects again. And after two of those sessions with the carnivore care, he started hunting on his own and eating insects again. It's been about probably a week and a half now where he's eating consistently every night all on his own because, um, you know, we might mix in carnivore care for him periodically just to hopefully catch him up with his growth and development and make sure he has enough nutrients. But, you know, it's not something that we want him to be dependent on. That's not how they behave in the wild. Look, if it came down to it and that was literally the only thing he'd ever eat, I'd feed it to him. But ideally, he's going to hunt and eat insects just like he is now. And being that he went right back on to insects, I don't think he's spoiled by the carnivore care. So I think it's a good idea that we keep providing it uh, a little, you know, a little longer and sporadically just to kickstart him and catch him up because he is way smaller than his sibling or his clutch mate. I guess they're all siblings. He's bigger than some of his siblings, the newest ones, but uh, definitely a lot smaller than his clutch mate. This breeding project has been really fun for us. It's something I want to do since third grade when uh, my teacher brought in duck eggs and we watched them incubate throughout a portion of the school year. And I was just so fascinated by that. And then being so obsessed with reptiles as I am and specifically this species, right? Because I didn't really want to breed leopard geckos because there are enough leopard geckos being produced. And arguably there are enough of these guys being produced too. But they're a, look, no pets are really easy to keep. It takes a lot of research to keep anything healthy, but they're not chameleons or anything like that. So I think we'll have good success finding them good homes. And they're just so cool. You know, this is a great pet. Look how docile they are. Atlas really doesn't like people, but he just kind of turns into a potato at some point, just like he is now. And Gaia is just a little champ laying a bunch of eggs. And with that, as you guys can see, if you follow this channel, subscribe subscribe to channel. We've made a lot of videos already about the little baby fat tails and Gaia and Atlas and whatnot. 
and uh, let us know in the comments if that's something you want to see more of. I can talk about them all day. But with that said, guys, if you like reptile content, then this is the channel for you. We'll be posting twice a week, so make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And once again, I'm Raph, this is Atlas, this is Gaia, and we'll see you next time.